Hello, and welcome to Global Data Themes Instant Insights. At Global Data, we define a theme as something that keeps a CEO awake at night, as businesses that invest in important themes will succeed, and those that don't will fail. Hello, and welcome to Instant Insights. I'm Emma Taylor, and today I'll be talking to Glenn Barkley, Head of FDI Services at Global Data, following the recent publication of FDI into Asia Pacific 2022 to discuss his key findings. I'll post a link to download the free report in the description below. Hi, Glenn. How are you? Yeah, good. Thanks. How are you? Yeah, good. Thank you. Thanks for joining me. No problem. Good to be here. So following your your report, we should probably talk about what sort of FDI is broadly, um, just to start off. So it's sort of when a company establishes operations outside of the country in which it's headquartered. But there are also like different types of it. And you talk about Greenfield FDI. Um, that's your focus in your report. Can you give us a short uh, explanation about, about what that is? Sure, yeah. So Greenfield FDI is when a company establishes a, a physical presence abroad. So this could be a brand new investment or it could be an expansion of an existing farm facility. So an example would be the likes of Toyota opening up a new automotive manufacturing plant in the UK or Microsoft could expand its data centers in Ireland. And yeah, also just to note that, yeah, the report excludes other types of FDI such as M&A, VC, and we focus on Greenfield because it's generally viewed as one of the most, if not the most favorable types of FDI, because it brings capital into the local economy and it creates jobs. Okay, interesting. And your latest report focuses on FDI into Asia Pacific. So what's the trend in in FDI in that region? Yeah, well, overall, we've seen very strong growth in FDI project numbers into Asia Pacific in 2022. So the number of investments grew by around 34% year on year, which was more than double the global rate. And Asia Pacific region in particular, it was one of the hardest hit regions during COVID-19. Project numbers declined by over 36% in 2020. And other world regions grew much faster in 2021, and many of those are still seeing what what I'm calling a a prolonged recovery in 2022, whereas most Asian countries' FDI growth was slower in 2021 and then a lot steeper in 2022. And that's meant that FDI project numbers into Asia-Pacific finally surpassed pre-COVID levels for the first time. Oh, wow. So is that, I mean, is that growth quite surprising given the plethora of, of, of world problems that we, we've we seen in 2022. Yeah, I'm sure that uh, I'm sure that it will surprise many people given given the macroeconomic climate that we've experienced in 2022 and, and that we're still experiencing now. But macro factors, they typically have a light impact on FDI. So what we're seeing now is around a 20% year-on-year decline in project numbers so far in 2023. And this is because FDI projects take on average 18 to 24 months to complete and investor sentiment was extremely bullish after COVID lockdowns were lifted. However, we're now starting to see a more cautious uh, investor approach across several sectors. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Sort of like balancing back out. Mm-hmm. Um, and and which countries uh, were the biggest winners in the region and the biggest losers as well in 2022? Yeah, so we actually seen several winners. There were there were large increases in FDI in countries like India, Malaysia, Vietnam, and the Philippines. But India was certainly the star performer. It was the number one destination country in the region, followed by Australia, which actually saw saw it saw a slight dip in project numbers in 2022. But that was more because of very strong growth in 2021, and Singapore ranked third. But India actually moved up to become the third largest recipient of FDI projects globally, surpassing the UK and France. And India accounts for around a quarter of FDI into APAC and it grew annually by 72% in 2022. And the US was a real key source market for this growth. So US companies accounted for around half of all FDI into India. And tech, business services, communications and electronics, they were all key sectors for, for investments. And then on the contrary, China was one of the biggest losers. So project numbers fell annually by 18%, which puts the number of inward investments around the same level as they were in 2020. And 
there are numerous factors that are influencing the slump, including the strict zero COVID policy, sluggish economic growth, rising salary costs, and heightening geopolitical tensions. But many other Asian counterparts benefited from China's decline. So US investments in China almost halved while increasing in almost every other Asian nation. So for example, US FDI into Malaysia tripled, it doubled into the Philippines, and it, overall it was 26% higher into Asia than it was in 2021. Oh, interesting. And uh, what about some of the key sectors and themes uh, for, for all this FDI in, into the Asia Pacific? And, and who were some of the, the top investors? Yeah, so software and IT services and business services were the leading sectors by a number of projects. Both of those sectors recorded substantial annual growth, growing by 70% and 72% respectively. This was the largest, uh, actually the largest growth of any of the top 10 sectors. And SaaS, computer programming, fintech, they're, they're all the driving forces um, within software, while consultancy, employment, and trade and development activities are the largest BPS subsectors. But since 2019, education and renewable energy sectors have actually been the fastest growing in the region. And renewable energy is now the eighth largest sector, having been the 14th largest in 2019. And then in terms of themes, digitalization is the key FDI theme globally, and it was also in Asia Pacific. Companies are now well aware of, of the importance to digitalize their operations in order to remain profitable. And then you have other tech themes that, that drive inward investment in the region, including cloud, AI, data analytics, and e-commerce. And then there were some macro themes also listed in the top 10. So supply chain was the second largest theme, and this is based around companies looking to diversify away from China, and geopolitics also at, at rank seventh. And in terms of investors, then although we've seen a decline in tourism FDI, many hotel companies were still the largest investors in Asia Pacific. So Accor was the leading investor by numbers of projects, while Marriott, Intercontinental, Jingjiang, Hyatt, Hilton also ranked highly. And then we have the likes of Amazon, Deutsche Post, IDP, Education were other top investors. And BP was the largest renewable energy investor, for example, and Porsche was the largest automotive investor. And we've seen some of the largest FDI projects in the world actually being announced in Asia in, in 2022. So AES announced plans to, to build a $13 billion offshore wind farm in Vietnam. Vedanta Foxconn announced plans to do a, a joint venture in India to open up a $12 billion fab plant. And Canadian Solar announced a $9 billion solar PV manufacturing plant in China. Oh, yeah. So that renewable energy and energy energy transition theme, um, Asia Pacific is is uh, no anomaly to that. I guess a lot of those themes are also like quite interconnected. Like digitalization will be so important for AI as well. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think that's where, in terms of some of the top themes that, that we're seeing, I think there will be growth in some in, in some of those things. So AI, cybersecurity, for example, will, will become more prominent. But uh, yeah, digitalization is really a key theme across um, across all jurisdictions. And I think I think geopolitics is an interesting one. It, it probably ranks higher in Asia Pacific than it than it does in, in other world regions. Um, so it's it's interesting to see that balance and the US China decoupling, China's relationship with Russia, um, and and other areas like that. But we're seeing um, we're seeing a real a real noticeable change now in the direction of FDI because because we're seeing a new direction in terms of globalization. Right, yeah, of course. So you mentioned AI. What are the key trends that um we should be keeping an eye out for on for the you know for the rest of the year? Yeah, so I think firstly we're hoping to see that FDI will pick up in the second half of this year, but that's going to be dependent on on sorting out the the plethora of macroeconomic issues. I think top of that list for most governments is to get inflation under control. So that will give investors the stability that they crave. And then other key trends to keep an eye on are going to be areas like industrial policies that governments are creating in order to attract foreign companies to their location and also to keep local companies at home. And there's multiple policies now in place, but the, the US Inflation Reduction Act being one of the most popular and most of those are, are revolving around key strategic sectors. So you mentioned there about um, 
renew, renewable energy. Um, you know, it, it's particularly important for the likes of that. And then there's the, the new world order. So whether changes in trade partners will lead to increased FDI flows between those countries, I suspect that it will. Um, and in terms of markets, I think Asia will, of course, remain an attractive destination. But I, I really do think that the region to keep an eye on is the Middle East. And we're seeing huge increases in activity in that region. The availability of capital, the opening up of their economies, becoming much more business friendly and the positive regional growth are, are very attractive to investors. And then in terms of key sectors and subsectors, you mentioned clean tech, and I think renewable investments um, are going to continue their steady growth. Uh, and then with the subsectors of hydrogen and energy storage, I think they're going to be the ones to watch in terms of explosive growth. And then FDI and electric vehicles, and in particular battery production, they're the ones to watch in terms of the generation of, of huge uh, job creation capabilities. Uh, and then we have semiconductor investments. So although they're not numerous in volume, they're creating some of the largest capital investment projects that we're seeing. And I do expect AI to become even more prominent uh, whenever we're talking about themes. I think it's going to be a much more prominent theme in FDI projects as companies do continue to digitalize their operations. And then we'll have the likes of cybersecurity, emissions reduction, geopolitics and supply chain. They're going to be other key things to be mindful of. Yeah. And I guess AI could also bolster that that semiconductor um, growth because they'll, they'll be needed for. Yeah, and I think this is one of the things where we talk about AI as a theme because themes are cross cutting uh, across sectors. So uh, in the olden days, everything was classified into a sector and we use standard SIC codes or NACE codes or NACE codes. And a lot of these new emerging subsectors even that we're seeing today don't fit nicely into those classifications so a lot of what we're talking about now in terms of fdi and in terms of, of macroeconomic issues is very much theme based and i think that's the direction that economic development and fdi promotion needs to needs to go down a lot more rather than trying to classify things into the past it's it's looking mm -hmm. more towards the future for those emerging technologies and how they going to influence FDI in particular sectors. So you mentioned AI can be used in, in the automotive industry, it can be used in semiconductors, it can be used in any industry. Um, and I think the most successful companies are going to be the ones that that adopt the technology uh, the quickest. Mm. Yeah, for sure. A less like sort of siloed approach. And that's why I guess mm -hmm. it's so good to look at things like FDI, which cover, yeah, every theme. Amazing. Thank you so much, Glenn, for those instant insights. I think that's all we have time for. But thanks for listening. And from us in thematic intelligence, see you next time.